which is only possible for people who are of a subtler nature to understand the value of Sahaja Yoga. to hold to the values of Sahaja Yoga and to retain it in this fragmented world. The world is fragmented and everybody is acting towards one's own destruction. All the values which people follow are gross values. Most of the values are absolutely gross. So for Sahaja Yoga we have to have people who are trying to justify their subtleties. <coughs> Such subtler people have always been little different from the mundane crowd. And these people always express themselves in such a manner that their existence itself suggests that they are trying to cement the whole world. Sort of you can feel that Those who can feel that there is an element within us which makes us laugh at the stupidity of others who may appear to themselves very seriously doing certain things, but to us it seems as if it is rather stupid to waste their lives. This is a caliber of different people. First, these people with that caliber and that dynamism within them will be settled in Sahaja Yoga, not the ordinary gross type. But because our doors are open to everyone, because there is no charge or anything for anything, all sorts of people come in. And when they come in, they don't know what they want. Out of them, some could be the grossest of all. Some might be just walking in to take out some things, just to steal something, possibly. I have seen all kinds of people coming to Sahaja. Such people, when they find that there is something available, they come in and go away. Another kind, maybe, which is coming here is the one which is extremely gross, thank you, but they can think that he can make some lies on work here by having connections with different people, he can exploit it and make some money out of it. <coughs> so money-mindedness is a very gross thing, is a very gross thing. If people are money-minded, then Sahaja Yoga doesn't work out well with them. If you always think about money, of your insurance, about how the carpet is spoiled, this has happened, that happened, such people are very difficult. 
But lower than these are the people who come here to have some sort of an exploitation out of Sahaja. Such gross people also come in. And when they find that they cannot work out their plans, they get out of it. Now the third type of people who come here, they come for some material gain from Sahaja, maybe physical gain also, like somebody is sick, so they come for their sickness. A very gross way of looking at things is to come to Sahaja for getting cured. So when they get cured, they disappear. <laughs> Quite stupid, isn't it? <laughs> then some people come with the idea that maybe with mother's blessings our financial problems may be solved, only with that idea. Then they also get their financial problems solved and they get out. But some of them do not, some of them cannot manage what they want to have, then they get upset. Now the best caliber of the subtlest form is that which is just seeking Sahaja, which is just seeking union with God, nothing else. That's the best caliber. That caliber works hard. It has very concentrated effort. It understands Sahaja very quick. Only thing is that because of Western habit of thinking, some of the people, though they have a caliber, circulate around themselves. They go on thinking about it discussing about it, arguing about it, and then they become stationed at a point. Otherwise <laughs> it goes little round and round itself. They have a calibre, they have a height, they definitely have. As we call, they have that weight. They, ha they can feel their element, but still they go on as a habit, you see, because they are used to it, they go on encircling round and round and round. They have to steady themselves. But the caliber of a person who just wants to be, to become, can never be deterred by anything, because he is subtle in a way. In his lifetime he feels the subtleties of the unconscious. He has felt his uh, archetype images of these deities. He has known them. He had these eruptions within him. He identifies and he recognizes the subtleties that he has felt 
and he tallies them with Sahaja Yoga, and Sahaja Yoga gets him like that. Now these subtleties which I am describing to you come to you not through your mental effort of this lifetime, but comes to you from the experiences of many lives you have gone through. And as soon as you come near Sahaja Yoga, you start sucking. That is the best caliber. But because the door is open ajar, the grossest of gross also can come in. But sometimes they come this way and go back the same way. Some of them, they come halfway and rush back. Some of them come inside and get out from the other side. But those who stay are the people who are subtler by nature. It is a very subtle happening. If you have lost your subtleties, say, some people, as I said, even doing hard work with your fingers, you become insensitive, even physical disrespect to your fingers you become a little bit insensitive. Even when you get your Realization, you may not feel the vibrations that good. But that is not so important. Of course, vibrations you must feel for Realization, but maybe due to some external reasons also, or maybe due to some physical problem, you may get a situation where you may not feel the vibration so much. But doubts would not rise in your minds because there are no vibrations. You would just think that, yes, the vibrations are not there, I must get my Vishuddhi chakra all right, but it is there. And even if the doubts come in, a subtle person will fight it, will argue it out, but a gross person won't. The subtle person is a brave man, and his bravery comes from his built-in capacity of those subtleties. He does not suck up to doubts. He does seize it, he fights it. He does not succumb to it. But Sahaja Yoga is such a wonderful thing. Even those people who sometimes looked very gross suddenly came out with such beautiful manifestation of subtleties that it is surprising. But that is exceptional. The mind and the human brain is subtle on certain points and gross on some points. It's most surprising. Maybe background, maybe the... Can you take her that at the back? Because, you know, that's disturbing, no? Just now take her at the back, all right? Good.
just give her a seat to sit down, all right? Sorry. Then I'm going to take you in my lap. Huh? She's very unhappy to leave <laughs> the place. Let her. It's a very subtle subject, is it? Please pay attention. If a genius is created, or we can say a, a call it a prodigy, but I would call it a genius. There's a difference between a prodigy and a genius. Prodigy is a person who, for a short time of their lifespan, suddenly become very talented and after some time the talent goes away. And a prodigious person may be mentally absolutely very, very low, very low. So it is done by some sort of a spirit position. But a person who is a genius is a person who has those sensitivities. The mind which is covered with thoughts, which is thickened, which is gross, can be thinned out at certain points and could be very sensitive to certain points. For example, some people could be very sensitive to music. Some could be to art. Some could be to human beings. Some could be to other things which might make them something rare people. But these subtler things which creates your personality always indicate in your being that there is something of the beyond which is throwing some images within you, such people are conscious of them, that there are some images which are throwing these subtle ideas within you They are erupting some new commotion within you, and once you start feeling them, you are compelled to put them down somewhere. Thank you. That's how the poets are created, musicians are created, great masters are created. Now the fashioning of these subtle ideas is another job. But the beauty of these subtle ideas is this, that they are universal in nature. If they were not, they would not be so much appealing to everyone. So there is something universal in those. And that universality when manifested or fashioned into some expression, then it is absorbed universally. Now it depends on the person how much he is closer to those images and to the image of a spirit. If such a person is a realized soul, then the expression is heaven. The fashioning of those expressions, of course, is determined by the surroundings, the different atmosphere, the traditions and all that in which the people have lived.
that is the fashioning part of it. But the universal essence of everything, that element which is universal, is manifested in a particular fashion. The more a person is nearer to his Self, even the fashioning is very universal in nature. Then such a person doesn't try to be moulded by traditions so much. But the traditions which have come through meditativeness or through realized souls definitely give him a better chance of expression. So the fashioning also evolves gradually in every country, in every place, till it reaches the point where people start understanding them in meditation. Now there are two types of fashioning. One is the fashioning that comes from outside, the another from inside. The fashioning that comes from inside could be the teachings of the great masters who are realized souls and your own understanding of the work of these great masters. The another style could be that you see what people have been producing, all of them, and you gather out of that and fashion your manifestation accordingly. In the second type of thing, they may be realized, they may not be realized. Now when we go to Sahaja even a person who is not a genius, who has never been a genius, who had no idea of any special expression in life, can get Realization and of the highest type. Maybe much more than a genius, because genius might have become a genius by now, you see. His ego must have bloated out, he might be a genius instead of a genius. <laughs> <coughs> but a Sahaja Yogi, when he gets his Realization, his Realization is a sign not of his subtleties, but of his Kundalini, in what condition she is. If the Kundalini is absolutely frozen, that means a person has no desire to have Realization. He is coming to Sahaja Yoga to make some money out of it or to make some name out of it or to be... A, he could be a burglar coming as Sahaja Yogi to burgle away, say, my shoes. Such a person can be very difficult for Realization. But maybe with some people who have some basic problems also can have their Kundalini completely frozen out. But people of very ordinary appearances, of very ordinary life, could be very subtle, much more than all these genies, genie asses and geniuses put together, because they can feel their Self. Such people do not cheat themselves or others, no question. 
their whole attitude towards Sahaja is like a person who is dying and gasping for air. They are just struggling to get the truth. They have no other interest in life but to get to the truth. Such people could be very strong-headed, could be very different from normal. They may think many things stupid. Even, you see, just to have a wife and children and family is quite stupid, isn't it? That's not the end of life. It's quite a stupid thing to do. I don't say that you give up that, but it's not the end of life. So right is a part of it. We are not to be lost in it. We believe that marriage is important. We believe that in the marriage husband wife should be very much understanding each other. There should be love between the two. There should be enjoyment so that the children also feel the security of the family. So the society improves. All this is all right. But that's not the end of it. In India you'll find many families like that, where a husband and wife are carrying on nicely, children are nice, their money is in the bank, when they die the money goes to the children, when the children are married nicely, then they have their children, money goes to the bank, when they die the money goes to them. goes on day in and day out. Nothing, it's so mundane. That doesn't mean I believe in divorces. Of course, that's something nonsensical. But to be married means just you have entered into life. At least you should enter into life. That is important as far as entering is concerned. Basic. But that is just the basic, that's not the end of life. If you are a subtler person, you will not think what, has, what is your advantage monetarily or what you are doing, what is the thing, what gain you have got. Of course you will see that as yoga is established, your kshema will be established, your well-being will be established. You will see that clearly. It is to be seen, to be thankful. And the kshema is all right because you should not have worry of kshema, but you should have free time to devote yourself to meditation and to sergio so that you don't have too much worry. That's how the kshema comes in. But when the kshema comes in also one may start going into the same circle of greediness, having more and more money, more and more this, better clothes, better house, how to get this, this circle may start. There's no end to it. So you have to cut it down. I'm not saying that you just have one dress and all your life you end up with one dress. It doesn't mean that, because, you know, if I say anything, people will shoot off to the other end. I'm trying to keep it in the center. <laughs> that not too much attention will be required on one side or on the other, of indulgences or of asceticism, none of these. You are not to announce anything or neither you have to indulge into anything but feel your subtleties, feed them, nourish them, look after them. You should be proud of your subtleties, <coughs> that you have these subtler values while others don't have. And that itself will be so self-sustaining that you can withhold all those values that you get from your subtleties against the whole world. 
because the world is so fragmented, so cut off, that everybody feels lonely. But that does not by any chance mean you should be arrogant to others, you should be fighting with others. No. But in darkness a light shines. The whole is darkness. If the light accepts the darkness, then it becomes darkness. So the light must accept that I am the light and I am the path and should stand up. Does, does not in any way means any arrogance to others, any showing off to others, but it is the light, and the light by itself emits. When this happens to you, you will not hate yourself, first of all. but you will love and respect yourself and respect the virtues in you and not your grossness. Kundalini itself makes you subtler and subtler. But if you are a stone, what can Kundalini do? Now it is for you to see where you are stone. There should be lot of heart search. The greatest stone age is nowadays. <laughs> heart is like a stone, doesn't move. When talking to others, it doesn't move. It has no ripple in it. There is no joy in it, it is like a stone sitting there to hit everyone. See, anybody sees you, oh Baba, he is coming, go from the other road. Woo! That fellow with a stone heart. And you feel you are all right, you are a very good person because you are stone hearted. You think you can dominate the whole world because you are stone hearted. You can give psychological treatments to others, keep quiet, don't talk to anyone, shout at others, do whatever you please, because you have a stone heart. Nothing happens to a stone there. <coughs> now this stone-heartedness is the sign that you should not be any more in Sahaja. You must have a heart as your mother has, pulsating with love, with compassion, with joy, with happiness, with giving. That should be the attitude, not rationality, nothing. It's just the feeling, feeling for the pains of others, feeling for their longings and feeling for their aspirations, just feeling them with yourself is their desire to be the whole to be the ocean itself, itself is so fulfilling. We should not have our ideals among ourselves. Like she does this, so why should I do? He does this, so why should I do? It's very mediocre. It's a very low-grade business to see others, to worry about others, to talk about others, is extremely low-grade. A person who is of a calibre has his standards so much higher that he cannot compare with himself with others. 
that's really true. So you know, if I start comparing myself with you, what will be my position? I, mean, I can't do it, see. Then you say, it's all right for you, Mother. It's perfect, I agree. It's all right for me, as I am. But you can be like me also. But if I start comparing and thinking, oh God, what is this? Then I should give up doing anything, thinking, where have I come? But when you know that, you are not comparing, you are just giving. Question of comparison should not arise at all. At all. It's just feeding. I just feel. In the same way you feel each other. Not in an artificial, courteous way. Some people think that if they have given their seat to someone, they have been really the generous, generous people, the greatest generous people. Just be yourself now. Let's see. Just be yourself and that you are the light. What is the comparison? The comparison exists when our caliber is low. If it is twenty-four carat gold, what is the comparison? It's absolute. If you are at an absolute point, there's no comparison. So try to see that your caliber is that, that you are of that caliber. And don't worry about gross people. Gross are gross, will remain gross. You just don't worry about them. You keep your caliber all right. And that is what is the most essential part of Sahaja. Thank you very much. Hmm? They always tell me that you are actually God, hmm. Father God Himself. Hmm. Um, well, I can't see that at all. All right, now put your hand towards me, ask the question. The simple is computer. Work out your computer, ask the question. Finished. That she is the E, means she is the one who is the desire of God Almighty. She is the power of God. And it is only she who incarnates. If you read the Vedas, it is said that she created her child. And the first sound that was created was the child. And that sound is the sound what we call as Brahma or the Logos, as they call it. So now, what is the difference between God and God's desire? What is the difference between sun and sunlight? What is the difference between moon and moonlight? What is the difference between the word and the meaning? So the God Almighty, Him whom people understand, 
He is just a witness. The day these two things will meet, there won't be any world left. Till they are separated, all these things happen. When they meet and merge into each other, there's nothing left. It just becomes the sound, Brahma. We cannot understand these things because we have never seen two things that merge together as God and His power. We cannot understand anything like that because there is no parallel. Now, you can rationally also see things that people, when they bend before Me, their kundalini starts moving. It is written in the scriptures, only at the feet of Adi Shakti this would happen. Not only that, but you people who have not been to any austere life or anything have got realization, and that your own power is giving them realization, isn't it? There is no one <coughs> In the whole world today, there may be some realized souls who can give the way you give realization. You go and talk to some great gurus. They are jealous of you. They know who I am. They have told people who I am. But they are jealous that they don't understand why of all the things I have given you these powers, while they don't have. They can't give realization the way you gave. In a second like this, nobody can. You can go and have a look at them. They are great people, no doubt. But your Kundalini works like a jet. They move like elephants. <laughs> From one chakra to another chakra. The Kundalini doesn't move that way as it moves because I have given you the authority. You can go and meet them and they will tell you. There are thousands of people, they have got disciples, but they don't send them to me. They said, Mother, you will find your caliber. These gross people, you leave it to us. We'll manage them. We'll send them later on. Just now you find your subtle people. Why Sahaja Yogis are few? Because there are very few subtle people in this world of that caliber. That's why I'm always requesting you that do not divert your attention here and there. Settle down, become good Sahaja Yogis, unless and until you really become good Sahaja Yogis, I cannot move to the second strata. Because the first strata is not yet settled down, they are worried about nonsensical things. I mean, I just sometimes feel very unhappy to see that you fight among yourselves. I mean, this is something so painful. That you say harsh words to each other. I mean, you are the cream for me. You go and ask any one of the gurus, if they can move the Kundalini on their fingers as you do. These powers cannot be given by an ordinary person. I look ordinary, no doubt. I have to. But also you have seen me in other forms. That's not important. Important thing is you should see your own transformation and how many powers are manifest. If you go and tell somebody that I have started giving realization and raising Kundalini, they will say, you are mad, how can it be? Impossible. Nobody is going to believe you at all. You see, you have got it so easily. Why? Because I recognize that subtlety is in you.
these gurus recognize me they know about me they know who i am they are telling others there are so many of them like that i told you the story of the lady american lady she might come sometimes i think we met her isn't it some of you have met her she went to rangoon and there she was she went to meet some very great high soul who was living on a mountain and he would not meet many people but she went there and he really respected her and when she came in she said i am going to sit at a lower level than yours so she could not understand he said because you have seen mother with your own eyes i haven't i will have to die to come and see her again and then she was surprised but first of all know that you have got these powers within you then know that you have got them because i have chosen you all right good see ya only thing you get rid of your egos which give you ideas you see sometimes they come like big balloons so tell yourself oh mr ego please get out these powers have got because mother has chosen me has loved me has nourished me and has accepted me as her child is a fact nobody can believe that you can give realization i tell you you go and tell anybody you should but they are not going to believe you if this flower says that i can become the lamp in the lighthouse it is not going nobody is going to believe it because the light in the lamp house is made in a special factory with a special this and special that but supposing this flower says so or if this flower says that i can cure your diseases they nobody would believe but it may when something fantastic happens you have to believe that there is divine acting or acting so dynamically only thing do not waste your energies in gross hankerings and gross wanderings and ramblings try to be subtler and subtler there is nothing that i have to ask for now you think it from god's point of view you are to be given realization first job and it's a headache you know somebody has to take up the headache of giving realization it is much easier to be crucified once but to be given realization 100 times <laughs> to all kinds of funny kundali needs to be raised listen <laughs> we cannot do it i don't have to give you realization to tell you all about it to decode all the chakras to show you all the chakras to tell you all about deities these archetypes and everything and every word of it is true and acts and works you have experimented and found out somebody has to come now it has been my lot to come i don't mind as i told the other day any one of you takes my seat i'll be very happy to be a sahaj yogi sitting down there <laughs> <laughs> I would be the happiest 
person. I'll give you five violent slides. <laughs> and all the flowers from the market I'll bring for you. If you could sit here and do the job for me. It's very easy to doubt. But can you do the job? No, you cannot. This is the trouble with the Western mind is that he doubts, see? What are you doubting about? What is there to doubt? I cannot doubt myself. That's very difficult. When you know that this is the thing, <laughs> how can you doubt? Now if you doubt, what can I do? How to prove it? best way is to understand my love. Through that you will understand me better. It is much easier to understand me through your heart than through your brains, because I am very good at blasting them. <laughs> <laughs> and I play about with you lots of things by which I really give uh, you a very difficult time. Because if you start thinking, I make you think more. If you start doubting, I make you doubt more. So best thing is to see, as I told the other day, that whatever is in the next room is better to go and see than to sit down here and doubt, or to accept it and sit down here. No, go and see for yourself. You have seen it yourself. But just think how tremendous it is. Just sit down and think how great it is, how dynamic it is, that you have seen it with your own eyes. Just think. That you have felt it that you are the people who have got it. You are the first few who, who have known it. There may be thousands and thousands later, the whole universe may take it up, but you are the first few. Improve your calibre. Come up. I think if you can give me leave, I would like to go, because the whole day I have been really working very hard. I did my cooking and did that. Now what is the matter with you? you still more. <laughs> still more. <laughs> Better. Keep like that. All right. Now, can I take your leave?